Hello, I'm Jake Hammercott and I'm a junior technician here at Summerford Associates and today we're going to be talking about our final topic in our Splunk Stream Explained short video series um, and we're going to be talking about setting up Windows DNS monitoring in Splunk Stream. What I'll go through today is kind of a, an example of how you would set up a stream so anything you learn today can be taken away and applied to different types of streams. Um, but anyway, let's jump straight into the Splunk environment we've got set up for this demo. So we've now gotten to our Splunk Stream app. In our Splunk box, we can head to Configuration and Configure Streams. And from here, we've got a table list of all of the streams we've currently got enabled. If we want to add a new one, we can just head to the top right and go new stream and for this we're going to be selecting a metadata stream. On this first page we've just got really basic information so the protocol which is going to be uh, DNS for this example then we need to give it a name and we're working on a demo box so forgive me for the naming conventions we're just going to be calling it win underscore demo underscore DNS and then we need to give it a description. Your description is probably going to be a little bit more beneficial to people reading it but we're just going to use something that's really simple today next we've got the aggregation so aggregation is really cool it allows you to take events from the same key field value uh, over a given 60 seconds and then aggregate them into a single event so in this case the configuration has said that they are using source ip as their key field and that means they can then aggregate both of these two events and bring them into a single event. And not only that, we also get some extra information included in this single event. So, you know, not only have we gone down from two events to one, we've also included the mean, uh, values and the count inside of our event. The next page, we have got uh, fields. So this is just a list of fields that are being enabled or disabled. So included or you know not included in our events. This is completely customizable and all of the fields that you can find in this table come out of the box. So we might decide we don't want text values, but we do want you know additional information on VLANs in our events. This is something that you can come back to in the future. This isn't set in stone. So if you bring your data in and decide that actually we're missing stuff, you can then bring it back in. Our filters page is next. And this is something you're more likely to work on once you've brought the data in and had a look at it in Splunk. So it allows you to filter down to only include events based on a specific field value. So they've got this example here where they look at the HTTP method field and only events they've got that, yeah, that substring get. You can create your own filters. We're not going to in this demo um, because once I set up the stream, it won't actually work. It's just a demo environment. Next, we've got the settings page. Again, super simple. We need to select an index. Here, we're gonna select Splunk Logger. And then we need to set the status. So whether it's enabled, disabled, or an estimate mode. Estimate mode is again, really cool because it allows you to collect index volume stats on the stream without actually bringing that data into your indexes. So it can be really good to help you determine like your index and requirements. Is this gonna be way too much information to bring into Splunk? Or is this something that we can you know, quite comfortably have in our environment? Our final page is groups, which in your environment uh, should look a little bit more impressive than this demo. Here we've just got this one group. We should have you know, 10, 15, depending on our size of our environment. But this is where you tell the search head to tell specific forwarders about this configuration. So this is DNS data. You might have a dedicated subset of your forwarders capturing and ingesting the DNS Windows logs or events. So here you can specify that and you don't have to send this stream to every single one of your forwarders. Afterwards, we've created our stream setup. 
and if we just go back to the configure streams page and we scroll all the way down you can see that we've got win demo dns and as i said you do have the option to edit you can also clone if you want um, but we can edit here and this will allow us to pretty much change everything we just put in with a couple exceptions you can't change the name um, you can't change the protocol but you know you can change the index so let's move to it default you can add or change aggregation the same with filters and even fields thank you for watching our final installment into our Splunk Stream Explain series if you'd like to learn anything more about Splunk Stream, Splunk Security, or Splunk in general, please contact us at info at